All right, this lesson is actually going to focus on one of the most commonly asked questions of a sitemap. And that is, how do I know what kind of page to use? The single page versus the similar page and versus the document file. Okay, as we noticed, anytime you create a single page like this, it means that a new page in the website is going to be created, okay? Typically, it's if you have a major navigation item, that typically opens up a new page or in a long scrolling site, it opens up a new section of a page where it scrolls you down to that area. It's basically that big section, okay? So if you do a single page, it means a page is going to open that's new, okay? Uh, the most frequent question is, what's the difference between this and similar or like pages? Basically, similar or like pages are the same in that a new page opens, but the pages that open from a certain section tend to be very similar in nature. So instead of listing them all as separate pages, we just uh, specify that they're similar pages by showing this kind of stacking effect, okay? Then the third type is this document file, and it can be either a Word document or a PDF or something that can be downloadable or printable or whatever, okay? So I think that the clearest way for me to explain the differences here is to kind of show you how you represent it on a sitemap and what that would look like if it was a website. But instead of going into a website and possibly confusing you guys, I kind of wireframe these for you guys so that you can kind of understand the design, okay? So if we're looking at a sitemap and I know that I want a section or a page dedicated to the about information, whatever information that might be, I would create a single page, use this format, a single page to designate that there is an about page, okay? Now, it's just very simple. You just name it what you would name that section or that page. You don't have to put any of the details inside of that. It's up to you. You can annotate it if you'd like, but typically you just create a box and then you just put about, okay? That's a new page. Now, if you have a page for, say that this is an artist homepage, right? And it links to the works as another major section, then what you would do here is you would call this the works page, okay? And now this one over here, the contact page, if that's another page, you would do it the contact page. Now, typically, like I said, these would be assigned just a single page one because they open up into their own individual page and section, but also they're not designated like the stacking effect because of the fact that this page is very different visually and content wise than this page and very visually uh, and content wise different than this page. So that's why they are single pages like this, okay? So for instance, if we look at what the about design might look like, it has a picture and then some text. If we go to the works page, it might just have a bunch of thumbnails of the work in here. Okay. And then if we look at the contact page, this one has a form, it has, you know, contact information, a Google map, and then maybe a downloadable map or something. Okay. But if we look at these, they are visually very different in nature and they each require their own page. So that is why we are using the single page and that's why we're representing them here as single pages, okay? Whereas now, if we look at the works page and what might go inside of it, so we do have to anticipate what kind of content and how we might organize the page, um, we would look at the works page and each of these thumbnails may then, when you click on it, open up another page, completely other page. So it would open up another page, but this page and the way that the details for this page, it might have a big, huge, image and then some text details like the medium, the year it was created, the size of the uh, picture or whatever it is, the work. Um, all of that information is going to open up another page. And then when we click on this image here, that thumbnail in the works page, it would open up another page. But if you notice, all of these are going to be repetitive in nature in the way that they look and the, the content that they contain and how they're organized. So therefore, these are very similar or like pages. So when I represent them here, I represent these pages with the stacked kind of effect icon, which is for similar pages, okay? But it means that when I click here, something is going to open in a new page. And when I click here on the content of this, it's going to open in a new page, but these pages are similar. Okay. So that's how we represent them here. All right. Now the third kind is the document file type. So here, when we're in contact, it's saying that we have the ability to access something in this content here that will take us to this downloadable PDF. So when we're here, it's not necessarily the form. It's not necessarily the interactive map, but here, when we click on this button, 
in that content of that page, it allows us to download the map. So that is what it's going to be popping up or giving you to either download or print from this page from within that content. Okay. So hopefully that helps kind of understand the different types of page types. Something to keep in mind is that as you're site mapping, you do have to consider what content you have, the possible organization of how it might be split up on pages and how it might be organized so that you can think about how that interaction might happen here. Okay. Um, just know that it's an evolutionary process. So maybe as you start working on your wireframes in a subsequent week, you might realize that something on your site map doesn't make sense. So you may have to go back and edit your site map to reflect the changes of your wireframes and vice versa. Okay. All right. This concludes your lesson. If you have any questions, please be sure to contact me.